Hi there, Terry Bailey, Senior Minister of Indian Run Christian Church in East Canton, Ohio. And I uh, began yesterday a little series from the book of Ecclesiastes about living in depressing times and tried to break down Solomon's complaint for you about the capriciousness and arbitrary nature of life and how you don't always get ahead and good outcomes are not guaranteed just because you work hard and things seem so unfair and how that kind of fits in with our situation in this coronavirus era. Now, uh, I'm still probably just going to pile on more bad news today, but bear with me. Solomon complained a lot about how capricious and unfair it was and how these things happen that are unknowable and, and interfere with your life. But if you really dig into what is going on with Solomon, he's not admitting everything he knows up front. Let me, let me read you one of the hints that comes in the book of Ecclesiastes, and it comes from the seventh chapter, beginning with the 26th verse. And I discovered, more bitter than death, the woman whose heart is snares and nets and whose hands are chains. One who is pleasing to God will escape from her, but the sinner will be captured by her. Behold, I have discovered this, says the preacher, adding one thing to another to find an explanation, which I am still seeking but have not found, but I have found this, one man among a thousand. I have found, but not a woman among all these. I found this, Solomon said, and it is true. If you go back to the book of 1 Kings and you read the account, it says that Solomon married many foreign women and he loved them. He loved them. And they led him to worship the false gods of the countries from which they came. The Ashtoreths, the Molochs, and others. And it was because he let these women lead his heart astray that God said to him, Solomon, I will break this kingdom over which you rule. The kingdom that your father David founded. I'm going to break it. For David's sake, I will wait until the time of your son. But then a greater portion of the kingdom will be torn away and given to one of your servants. So yes, these things Solomon found. Now he passed on the negative feeling to all women rather than just those whom he should have known better than to marry in these circumstances, which is a little unfair, but he was feeling kind of bad about it. And if you go on to uh, the 10th chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon lets you in further on his thinking as he begins to say, well, here, here's a really good example of the kind of injustice I'm talking about. You can have this really good king, see, and this really good king can work hard and build great things, but you end up with one of his servants taking over it all. Oh, blessed is that land whose king is of the nobility, and boy, unhappy that land where the uppity servant takes over things, Solomon says. And my first thought is, a king of the nobility? Your father was a shepherd until God called him. But, but let that be. Solomon lets you know in these hints that he does understand why the bad thing that he so fears is going to happen. It's his fault. It will be his foolishness that destroys the kingdom that his father built. It will be his own sin that denies his son the better future that he might 
have had. And so it's really not so arbitrary after all. Solomon knows why the kingdom will be broken. He broke it. Solomon tries to defy the judgment of God, wants to murder the servant who is going to be taking over. That fails, and he knows that God's judgment will come true. In these days, I don't want to say anything like, if you get sick, it's God reaching out to smite you. But I will say this. If the world is broken, we know who broke it. We did. And all sickness and suffering and pain and sorrow are the results of the brokenness that we have heaped upon the system. And God is working to lead us to the day when he will make all things new and all of these troubles will be done away with. Now, I realize that's not entirely comforting in the midst of the circumstances of our present life, and I realize that I still haven't really gotten around to the good news, but I ask you to bear with me again, and let's pray. Father, help us to know the contributions that we have made through our sin to the troubles that shake this world. And help us to understand that this is what you want to clean out of our lives and out of this entire creation. And to be ready to cooperate with that process and to be filled with hope for the day when it is completed. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.